This is the 2020 Porsche Macan Turbo. Actually, all Macan models now are turbocharged, but this one with the name called Turbo is the one that has top-notch performance. <laughs> Back in 2014, where the Macan was first introduced to the world, it was by far the sportiest and most athletic SUV you could buy at the time. However, now, competition has become severe. Just think about it. Now you can get an Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio, you can get a BMW X3 M Competition, a Mercedes AMG GLC 63 S, you can get a Jaguar F-Pace SVR, and you can get its little cousin, the Audi SQ5. For sure, all these SUVs are not built to the same standard or have the same target market, but it does make it very hard to choose where to spend all this money. The Macan range starts at $57,800 in Canada, and for that, you get a 248 horsepower, 2.0 liter, four cylinder turbo Macan. For 65,600, you get the sweet spot, the Macan S, with a 3.0 liter V6 turbo with 348 horsepower. The next step up is the Macan GTS, which costs 72,100 and has the new 2.9 liter V6 twin turbo with 375 horsepower. And then it's this, the top of the line Macan Turbo with the same 2.9 liter twin turbo engine. It starts at 96,500, only this one gets 434 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. The Macan does share its platform with the Audi Q5, but Porsche has literally changed almost everything. I mean, the biggest difference, probably apart from the design and, you know, inside and outside, is that the drivetrain, the all-wheel drive system, is not the Quattro from the Audi. This one is very rear-wheel biased. The car is essentially a rear-wheel drive car. It will send power to the front. It does some very intelligent torque vectoring, but it's all very performance oriented. So in a performance kind of way, it's a good thing that this is not the Quattro, but overall, like an all-wheel drive vehicle, maybe it's not as capable as a Quattro Audi, like in deep snow, for example, or kind of like mild off-roading. The front suspension is double wishbone. The rear is a self-tracking trapezoidal link, which is a very complicated system initially developed for the Audi A6 and now currently used in things like the Audi RS7. All the bushings and mounts are Porsche specific, as is the geometry of the suspension. The gearbox is a PDK seven speed auto, and even the air and oil filters are Porsche exclusive. One thing is for sure, for Porsche to put their nameplate on this car, it has to be worth it. They don't mess about. They never produce cars that are not good. So for those of you that think that this is just a more expensive uh, Audi Q5, well, it is, but for a very good reason. The exterior is not eye-popping, but it does definitely look like a Porsche, and specifically its bigger brother, the Cayenne. It has holes in the hood for the LED lights to stick out. It has massive inlets in the front bumper for the intercooler, oil cooler, radiator, and brake cooling ducts. The standard wheels are 20 inch, but this one has the upgraded 21 inch. And look at those brakes. At the front, they're massive Brembo six piston calipers with 390 millimeter single piece rotors. At the rear, the calipers are less exotic, but the rotors are still a massive 356 millimeters. From 100 kilometers an hour, this thing came to a complete stop in just 39 meters. And for an SUV that weighs almost two tons, that is incredible. And the brakes don't only work very well. The pedal, the modulation, the feel, the feedback, it's near perfect. I love this brake pedal. Back to the design though, and the rear this time, with a facelifted model, now you get taillights that go all the way across and include the Porsche letters inside. And at the bottom, you have real exhaust pipes and a nice little diffuser. Inside, the design screams Porsche. It has my favorite analog clock on the top, which looks like an old racing stopwatch. The materials used are very high grade for the most part. There are very few spots where we have hard plastics, but most importantly, there are no squeaks or rattles. The center console with all these buttons at first looks kind of like a power plant control station. The only thing missing would be like an eject button for passengers that are backseat drivers, just the buttons, however, have been laid out in a very sensible fashion. 
it does take some time to train your brain so it knows where everything is, but eventually it works out. There are three things that are very difficult to find. The first one was the button to activate the heated steering wheel. I mean, it was a cold day, I felt it come on, I knew the car has it, I just couldn't find the button. So I had to look into the owner's manual and discover that the button is right at the bottom of the steering wheel inside the third spoke. You're in between, all the way in. Now press down. You're shitting me. <laughs> You're shitting me. Who engineered this car? Somebody with a really good sense of humor. No fucking kidding. <laughs> Somebody that made the life of those delivery guys, the guys that deliver you the car, important. Because they have to actually show you a few things on this car. Okay, can we go now? Let's go. The other thing is, I haven't figured out yet a seek button. So when I have my Apple CarPlay connected and I'm listening to my Spotify, if I want to go to the next track, from the steering wheel controls, I just can't figure out how to do it. And it still doesn't work. The third thing is the trunk, the tailgate in the back, the button to open it is right in front of your eyes, but so hard to see. So if you don't know where it is, it's gonna take a while until you find it. Ah! Ta da Why would you put it there? <laughs> the Porsche Connect infotainment system is simple and very nice to use. And I love that the screen has some kind of a coating on it that really resists fingerprints. Last but not least, I absolutely love this carbon fiber trim and the suede roof liner. It's so nice. The sunroof is a panoramic sunroof and it's large and it brightens up the interior. Visibility is surprisingly good towards every direction. And the front seats, apart from being super adjustable for everything, they're also very comfortable and hold you snug. It almost feels like they're hugging you, like gently and sweetly, like, like a mom. The rear seats aren't as comfy and behind a driver that sits properly, legroom will be a tiny issue if you're near or over six feet tall. Behind the passenger, who is always a kinder person than the driver, things can be a little better. It's almost like Porsche knows that this car isn't going to be bought primarily by families. I mean, sure they will, but not that much. So instead of giving you a very comfortable back seat, they've given you a really spacious trunk. At 488 liters, it is big enough for all your shopping or whatever. And because this is a fast car, they've even included a net underneath the tonneau cover so you can shove little items in there so they don't go flying when you start driving. As we mentioned earlier, this Macan Turbo packs a 2.9 liter V6 twin turbo engine under its very attractive hood and it makes 434 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. It is mated to a blazing fast 7-speed PDK automatic 16. transmission and with launch control 100. and the fitted Sport Chrono package, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour comes in a verified 4.3 seconds. All you need to do is put it in Sport Plus, hold the car down with a brake, press this little button in the middle, you get 20 seconds of the turbos being spooled up a little bit, and then you hold the car down, full gas. Oh my God. Yeah, that is phenomenal. Performance wise, yes, okay, it might not be as fast as the Stelvio Quadrifoglio or the BMW X3M competition, but if you ask me, I really don't care. Why do I not care? Well, the reason is that unless you drive these cars back to back, you'll never really know that this is not as fast. Or the other way to find out is if you race one of those guys and you lose, but you know, that's kind of illegal. So don't do it on the streets, on the track. Oh, well, the thing is that this car also returns outstanding fuel economy or mileage, whatever you want to call it. For the week that I've been in it, my average fuel economy has been 12.5 liters per 100 kilometers on average. And for me, for this kind of a car with this kind of performance, that's pretty good. The final reason I don't care about the ultimate speed is because this car is so well balanced, it can go to the track, put down some great lap times and smiles, then drive on the highway for hours, take you to work, do the school drop off, go shopping. It can do everything very well. 
Like the other cars, the Stelvio and the X3M competition, they're great cars, but building them, they made some sacrifices to be able to make them so extremely good in what they do. So on a daily basis, I'm pretty sure that you're gonna get sick and tired of those if, you, uh, if you're forced to live with them. This one has that sweet spot of everything. It's just super easy and nice to do everything in it. That's what Porsche does with all their cars. They make a car super capable from the track to the grocery store. Only Porsche can do that. The adaptive dampers here go from comfortable to less comfortable as you switch the driving modes or press the button for the suspension on demand. They never get stiff like Bernie or floaty like a boat. They are always just right. Handling is a selling point for this car. It outperforms cars that scrape the ground, but it's not a scary or needy machine. At the limit, it actually does some very clever torque vectoring to help things out and return a super sporty feeling. But even mechanically, the grip is immense and the transition to sliding is very progressive. This is an SUV that actually flatters your driving skills. I mean, as you enter a turn at speed, it initially understeers, but if you know what you're doing and you go on the throttle and you ask it to power out of a corner, it will actually accept the slip angle correction and it will allow you to go nuts. It's great. It might not be as quick around the corner as let's say a Stelvio, but for me, it's more fun. The electromechanical steering is heavy. The seat is snug. The driving position is great. The Porsche emblem is right in front of you. What is there not to like here? Okay, the small display in the instrument cluster is a bit slow to respond to the wheel buttons, but eh. And the lane keep assist feature on the highway, it's not, you know, the latest and greatest and can't compete even with like Kias, it doesn't steer for you. But the thing is, you buy a Porsche to drive it with your two own hands. Why would you give that up to a computer? Live your life, you spend the money, just enjoy it, drive it yourself. That's what a Porsche is for. My favorite feature is the wireless CarPlay and the wireless charging tray. I have an iPhone 11 non-pro and it fits perfectly. The Bose sound system is really loud and punchy, but funny enough, you can get an upgraded Burmster sound system. Like, how much better would that sound? I don't even know, this is pretty good. What sounds really great though is the exhaust, and you have a button for that. The driving modes include normal, sport, sport plus, and individual. And what I love about this car is that even in normal mode, it's not like lethargic, like modern day BMWs. Like this one, you're just driving along in normal, throttle input immediately picks up and goes. There's no question about it. It's like normal mode here responds as good as a BMW Sport Plus, but it's calmer. It's not like always agitated. It's just so much better tuned. In a nutshell, the Porsche Macan Turbo is a very, very nice and very, very expensive SUV. I think the sweet spot is the S or GTS, but if you can afford the Turbo, then why not? Compared to the other hot guns of the segment, I would say that the F-Pace SVR sounds better, the X3M is faster in a straight line, the Stelvio can corner better, but if you like the best of all skills combined in one package that's very well balanced, well then, this takes the cake. This is what Porsche does best even when they start from an SUV platform, and for that, overall score for this Macan is nine out of 10. If you like this video, please remember to subscribe, share it with your friends, leave us a comment if you'd like, but most importantly, till next time, be well. Perfect.